body invaders. Seventeen thousand kilometers away, this builder learns safety must always come first after doctors discover a hidden body invader. And as we were pulling it out, we could actually see on the end of it a bit of jelly from the back of the eye. Wojciech Gojkowski is a 37-year-old Polish carpenter. He came to London four years ago to look for work. One autumn, he's part of a team working on a renovation project in London. We had to clear the house and remove the furniture and carpets. It's two o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. Wojciech has just finished his lunch break. He returns to work three floors up, only to find he's left his protective goggles downstairs. I was just too lazy to go down and get my glasses because I was three floors up. I felt that taking up the carpet would be an easy job and I'd be able to do it quickly. But even the easiest job can turn in the blink of an eye. The carpet is held to the floor by a metal tack sticking out of a strip of wood. Once the carpet has been lifted, the wooden strip or gripper has to be prized off the floor. While I was doing that, something flew up and hit me in the eye. When it first happened, I couldn't actually open my eyelid. I had to force the eyelid open. Wojciech is worried his unprotected eye has been damaged. He tries to wash out any fragments and looks for signs of injury. When I opened the eyelid and poured water on it, I could see that the iris was damaged. Wojciech doesn't know how badly damaged the iris is, and he can't see any sign of anything in his eye. He decides to carry on working. He can only manage another two hours. The pain wasn't just in the eye. My whole head was hurting. And it was getting worse. I realized then that this was a serious situation and that I might lose my eye. Wojciech is gradually losing sight in his eye. His workmates take him to the local casualty units in London. There, staff make an urgent referral to a specialist eye hospital, where ophthalmic surgeons Mr. Ali Mirza and Mr. Alan Balsam start to investigate. The cornea is the, is the clear natural contact lens of the eye. And it was obvious um, from examining him that he had a, a full thickness corneal laceration, uh, which is a cut in the cornea. When I had a look at him, I could see the, the cut in his eye, and when we dilated him and checked the back of his eye, his retina seemed normal, which was good news. His optic nerve is normal. The next question for the doctors is whether whatever caused the laceration remains in the eye. Again, it appears that Wojciech's been lucky. Our examination findings, there was really nothing at all uh, that led us to believe that there may be something inside his eye. Wojciech is prepped for surgery to repair the tear to his cornea. The first thing to do is really to explore the wound, so you know where it starts, where it ends, uh, the shape of it. The surgical implements are tiny, some with blades no more than millimeters wide. To see what they're doing, the surgeons view through a microscope, which also films the operation. Here we have the, the laceration of the cut in the cornea. This sort of uh, beige-like structure pointing through is the iris, so that's actually coming out of the wound. Next, the surgeons tease the iris tissue that has come out through the original cut back into place. All structures of the eye were visible, so I was able to examine his retina and see that everything was clear and normal there, uh, as was the vitreous, which was the jelly of the eye. The priority is to seal in the iris material that had been sticking out by sewing up the injured cornea. This is the uh, first micro suture we're using, and the suture is literally like a hair's thickness. So that's how fine it is. And then we again use micro forceps to tie the knots. We typically use three throws to make sure that the knot is secure. The wound is repaired. After an operation lasting one hour, the surgeons make one last inspection of the eye. We're sweeping underneath the wound, and it was at that stage that we noticed something that wasn't behaving quite right. The iris is quite a fluid structure, so although it's solid, 
um, it moves in a kind of fluid way. And one part of it just didn't seem to want to move uh, in a normal way. Something as yet unidentified is causing the eye to behave in a way that stops the surgeons in their tracks. My first reaction was uh, actually total shock. So we thought, well, let's explore this further. It's very unusual. The doctors are amazed to discover that there is something in Wojciech's eye. What had been a delicate but routine operation has now taken a totally unexpected turn. Gently try and tease it out. It slowly comes and then as we're pulling, we're surprised to see that it's just longer and longer and longer than we expect. There was a hush around the theatre. Everyone was really taken by surprise. And lo and behold, we just kept pulling and this wood splinter uh, came out of the eye. The surgeons are on high alert for anything that might suggest further damage in the deepest and most sensitive part of the eye. And as we were pulling it out, we could actually see on the end of it a bit of jelly from the back of the eye. This is a critical moment. The jelly is attached to the retina, which is in turn connected to the optic nerve. If we just yanked it out, you would have automatically got a tear in the retina. That would damage the optic nerve, which could cause irreversible loss of sight in that eye. Here you see the jelly from the back of the eye, and we very careful to cut that to prevent any damage to the retina. We then place the wood splinter on the cornea to show its size. Although the size of this splinter appears small, i.e. 8 to 10 millimeters, for an eye, that's actually huge. Without safety goggles, Wojciech is fortunate that the impalement itself didn't cost him his sight. The splinter went through his cornea, went through his iris, and through his lens, and into the jelly of the eye, just missing his retina literally by a few millimeters. Wojciech's very lucky not to have been permanently blinded. Had the splinter not been found and removed, it could have caused infection or worse. Typically, the eye doesn't like having a foreign object within it, certainly not a piece of wood. So he would have had chronic inflammation, he would have had a high risk of getting an infection in the eye, both of which could cause irreparable damage uh, to the eye and could end up permanently losing their eyesight. I've never seen uh, a foreign body as, as large as this removed safely from the eye, so it was very satisfying to be involved in treating this man. Wojciech's stitches must stay in for three months to allow the injury to heal. Amazingly, given the size of the splinter, he suffers only a 5 to 10% loss of vision. Since the accident, he wears his goggles. One centimeter uh, uh, splinter in, 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 in the finger is, is a big splinter. In the eye, this is like stick, yeah? It's huge, yeah? The invaders come in all shapes and sizes and lurk in the most unexpected parts of the body. What defeats them is a combination of skill, ingenuity, and sheer luck. Often all three. And the brand new series of Body Invaders continues at the same time next week. But for more extraordinary stories and eye-popping images from the show, visit discoveryuk.com.